All right, in this video, we're going to look at the fill in the blank options in a Canvas new quiz. So right now I'm in a blank Canvas new quiz. To add the fill in the blank question type, we're gonna to go to the blue add button. We're going to click on fill in the blank and then I can come down to where it says question stem. So the way the fill in the blank activity works is, or the question type, how it works is, um, we're going to surround words with back ticks to indicate where students will fill in the blank, so to say. Um, and that's notated right here at the very top of your fill in the blank as directions so that that can kind of help you out. One thing to keep in mind when we're talking about back ticks throughout this video, the back tick is located just below the escape key on your keyboard. It looks like an apostrophe, but it is not an apostrophe. If you use an apostrophe, this question type will not work correctly for you. You have to use the back tick key. And again, that's below the escape key on your keyboard. So for the purposes of uh, this question, I'm going to go ahead and just paste um, some thoughts that I have as to what I want this question to look like. So I'm thinking of doing like a little three part question within question number one um, about science terminology. So on number one, the process by which plants make their own food using sunlight is called and I want the students to be able to type in the word photosynthesis. So I'm going to surround photosynthesis with those back ticks. And notice when you surround it with the back ticks, what pops up down here. So we're seeing, okay, the first set of back ticks is surrounding the word photosynthesis. So for the answer type, right now we have it as open entry where the text match contains photosynthesis. Now this is where you do have some options on the text match. You could make it so that students are close enough. You can make it so that they have to have an exact match. You can specify multiple correct answers and then you can do a regular expression match. So just for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna say that their answer has to contain the word photosynthesis. Whoops. Okay, so going back into editing that question, same thing on number two. Uh, this time I want them to fill in the word independent. So I'm gonna put my back ticks around the word independent. Once you put the back ticks, your option comes down here. It tells you what the word is that the back ticks are surrounding. And then again, you can change um, your answer type and then your text match. So I'm gonna keep my answer type as open entry for this first part of the video. And then same thing for number three, I'm gonna go ahead and back tick cell. And then you can see that that pops up right there. So as far as options goes with your open entry, you do have the options to show an on-screen calculator. And then of course, if you would like to adjust the points for this question, then you are absolutely able to do that. And then you can enter in any sort of item feedback if you want your students to see a specific comment if they get the questions correct or incorrect. So I'm going to go ahead and say done. And then you can kind of see what that looks like here on the teacher page. So I can see that photosynthesis is in a box, independent is in a box, and cell is in a box. But if you would like to do an additional preview to see what that looks like in student view without having to worry about publishing this assignment quite yet, you can click on preview and then you can see where students are going to type in their answer. Okay. So we're going to duplicate this question so that I don't have to retype all of that or do my back ticks again. And this time we're going to talk about changing the answer type. So instead of open entry this time, let's say I want to do the drop down. So on the drop down, this is kind of like how the inline choice operates. Um, students will have the drop down list to choose to fill in the blank. Um, so I'm going to need to give them a couple other choices to pick from. So I might say oxidation. I might say chlorophyll. And you get the idea. So same thing on number two. I might say dependent. And then on number three. I'm 
molecule. Okay, so again, switching the insert type to drop down and then adding in those possible choices. You have the same sort of options here with the fill in the blank drop down option. So I'm going to go ahead and click done. And then again, you can see the difference. Here's the open entry, here's the drop down entry, and then going back into preview mode. There's the open entry, and then here's the drop down. So you can see how students are choosing the answers that way. So if we go ahead and duplicate this question again, um, when we duplicate it again, and I'm going to actually move it down to the bottom, so it's in order for us. Um, when we duplicate it this time, we're going to select the word bank option. So on the word bank option, the correct answer, it will populate them a word bank, which will then become a drag and drop question type where they're dragging um, the correct word from the word bank to the blank. So I don't have to worry about additional options or anything there. I can just switch it to word bank, keep my correct answer, but you do have the ability to add in those word bank distractors. So again, if I do oxidation, dependent, um, and then maybe respiration. Um, something to take note of as far as your word bank options is you do see a new option here which will allow word bank choices to be reused. So if you would like that feature to be available, then you just check the box. But then otherwise your options all down here are all the same as we saw on the previous fill in the blank question types. So again, we're gonna click done so that you can see the difference. Um, so here in teacher mode, here is the word bank there, and it's showing you what you have chosen as the correct answers on the teacher side. But when you go to that preview side, again, here's your, um, or sorry, here's your drop down, and then now here is your word bank. So where students are clicking and dragging the words into the correct boxes. No, remember that I left the option on where they can reuse these word bank choices, but if you take that option off, um, then the words will disappear once you put them up into their location up there at the top.